Uh, this leads us to track two on the first album. And it's the song on the sticker on the cover. The hip clip of the week for M on MTV. Yes, believe it or not. Uh, Don't Mean Nothing, which was my first single. This song was not only MTV's hip clip of the week when it came out, but it was, um, a lot of people don't remember this or realize this, but Don't Mean Nothing was uh, first sent to rock radio. So before pop radio or any other radio stations even had Don't Mean Nothing, we took it to the rock stations. And um, it was the most added, and what that means is that the most radio stations, rock stations, um, added the, the song to their playlist the first week. Like 117 stations, I think. The first week that it was out. And it was the, the, the most amount of stations for a debut artist ever at that point. I don't know if that record's been broken or not, but I remember being really, really psyched about it. It, it didn't say so much about me, but it said something about the song. And um, people just really responded to Don't Mean Nothing immediately. And I think, um, I think it was, uh, you know, Bruce Geich and I wrote that song together in my, in my first house, the first house I was able to afford, little house in Los Feliz, California. And I had already gotten my record deal, and I um, had been kicking around L.A. for a while, and Bruce Geich and I were old friends from Chicago, and he was living in L.A., so he came over to my house one day, and, and we wrote Don't Mean Nothing. We wrote the, the music together, and then Bruce went home, and I wrote the lyrics over the next, I think, that night. And even though I wrote a lot of Don't Mean Nothing about my struggle trying to get a record deal and how phony and lame I thought the music business was at the time, and still do, even more so now, um, I think it was a pretty universal statement. And I think that's why it connected with people. I think a lot of people could really relate to it, no matter what they did for a living. Um, and it was also just, uh, you know, 1987, when Don't Mean Nothing came out, the radio was dominated by dance music and um, like hair bands. And Don't Mean Nothing was this sort of throwback. It was almost like, well, it was somewhat of a, a almost a, a, a reunion of Eagles, of the Eagles. Um, we had three of them. Because we had Randy Meisner and Timothy Schmidt singing back on Vocals with me. And we were then lucky enough to get Joe Walsh to come and play the guitar solo. And that was a momentous day for me. I couldn't believe it. And I didn't know Joe Walsh. I knew somebody who knew somebody who knew Joe Walsh. And we sent the demo, I think, or the, the rough track of Don't Me Nothing to Joe. And he came and played on that song just because he really liked the song. And uh, it was a life changer for me. It was a career changer. I think uh, I know that having Joe Walsh play on that record was a big help in getting it blasting on the radio. Because uh, it had been a while, it had been years since people had gotten to hear sort of a new eagle-y kind of song. And that's really what that record was a throwback to. And it was almost a tribute to the Eagles in a way. It's a song that I never get tired of playing live. I still close every show with it, and um, it's a very, very important song in my life. Uh, when we made the record, we cut the, the we cut the track at Capitol Studio B, and um, a drummer named John Keane played that amazing fill off the top, which every drummer I've worked with since then has trouble playing. Um, the great Nathan East is playing bass. Um, Bruce Geich is playing guitar along with Joe Walsh. And Michael Lamartian, who uh, was a very prominent record producer at that time, produced Christopher Cross and Donna Summer and Peter Cetera and um, many others, he, uh, he and I were friendly and we had written a song for the album, which I'll mention later. And Michael's one of my favorite piano players. And I just wasn't confident in my piano playing at the time, especially on something like that on a rock song like that. So um, I asked Michael and Martin to come and play piano and he kicked ass. And um, it was a fun day in the studio and uh, we knew we were onto something special that day. <laughs> 